There is something you have that is so powerful and people don't use it. It's your own story. How do we share this faith, this Jesus? We, we, we are ambassadors for the kingdom of God and we need to speak about our Jesus in a way that introduces him to people and makes him go, I gotta check him out. You, my friend, are an ambassador. It is stamped all over you. You're not just a follower of Christ. You are an ambassador to others of this Christ that you follow. And you need to learn to share with people. You know what I do? I just tell them my story. Whatever part of it I want. If they're struggling in an area of sin, I'll just say, hey, you know, I remember growing up and, and when I gave my life to Christ, there was a power. If they're struggling with who they are, with their identity, I'll just share what it did for me. If they're wondering about anything, if they're hurting, if they're, whatever the area of their life, I'll just try to share a time in my life. And, and I don't have, by the way, this great testimony that I killed 23 people, joined the Hells Angels, and then I did this and I did it, where I can just excite, excite them, mesmerize them. When I was a teenager, we would always bring in youth speakers, and the youth speakers were always like incredibly brutal sinners who got saved. And we thought that was going to help our kids. And so I would never share my testimony, you know. You know, a little clean Christian kid, and there's nobody perfect, by the way. We're all sinners, and there's things I did wrong. But I didn't have all this incredible Hollywood-type story that would mesmerize the youth to get him sitting there. I literally got to a place when I realized God had called me to the ministry. I thought, okay, I'd better take a hiatus from Christianity and go get a testimony. I need to go do something and, and, and get a testimony. When I come back, I can, I can talk with real experience about how bad sin is and how much drugs I did and how many much money I stole and, and how many months or years I spent in the pan. And then I discovered Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day. And all we do is exalt our former life. No, I, I tell people what he did for me on the inside, the peace that I have. And when I tell them, I tell them as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I don't back down one iota. And when they argue with me, I just stop. Are you trying to tell me what I felt? Are you trying to tell me what happened? No, I'm just telling you what happened to me. And most people, they just listen. Because no one can argue with your story. And you need to learn to share from your wealth of experience and say, well, Leon, I'm the same boy. I didn't kill anybody, shoot anybody, do any drugs, touch any alcohol. I'm not set free from drug addiction, alcohol addiction. So I didn't even know what to share. You know what? All of those things are periphery. They need to hear about that man who knows his marriage wouldn't have made it if he wouldn't have found Christ. That woman who didn't know who she was maybe. And, but when she found out that she was God's daughter or they helped you through a death in the family and you guys were, re you were ready to lose your mind. But God brought a peace. And whatever you can, it is your story that is powerful. It's not you screaming the word at them. It's not you preaching the Bible at them. It's not you digging up every doctrine you know. It's not you debating every disagreement that takes place because to give your life to Jesus Christ everybody's welcome with every crazy belief as messed up and as as wrong believing as they are but once they believe on Jesus they're accepted and then on this journey they begin to learn who they are you know that when you start sharing with people what you share your story what Jesus has done for you is so powerful you see we keep thinking that the message is just Bible verses but how many know you are the message too did you ever think that you might be the only living Bible that some people ever read you're it they know of you as a Christian and they are drawing conclusions already about your behavior how you talk, how you act, how you engage. When I realized that, it kind of occurred to me, maybe, maybe I ought to pay some attention to being a better ambassador. I started asking myself the question, what is the message that I am communicating right now as a follower of Christ? And I'm asking myself, not just how do I come across right now, or in the hotel down the road, or in the restaurant, but how am I coming across to my nine-year-old? Or my six-year-old? No, I have to think about that with my wife. What am I communicating about God in this moment 
as an ambassador everywhere. So ambassadors are 24 seven. We are ambassadors for Christ. It's as though God were speaking through us. So many people say, Nick, I'm being praying for God to do something or give me something. And I don't know what my purpose is. But read the Bible. It says to love God with all your heart, might, soul, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, we know that the world here as we know it is not going to last forever. The statistics are pretty awesome. For every person who is born, dies. And when we get to heaven though, there is one thing that I'm looking forward to, to hugging people who said, thank you for being a neighbor to me Thank you for not being too busy and so busy with busyness that you took time, took time to tell me about Jesus. When we're at the cashier check, uh, the cashier of your grocery store, when that 17 year old girl is getting your stuff, what are we doing? We're on our phones and we don't take time to look up. And you can say, hey, can I pray for you? What's the worst thing that could ever happen? She says, no. Oh my gosh. And so what do you do? You say, okay, I understand. But when I go to my car, I'm gonna pray for you anyway. So why don't you just tell me what you want me to pray for? What's the worst thing that could ever happen if you ever invite someone to your church? They say, no. What's the worst thing if you never invite them to church? Think of your five best friends. Do they know how Jesus grabbed a hold of you? Have you even written your testimony down? We're here on a missions trip for 90 years. But take time and pray for those you cannot see understanding that we can't change hearts, but God can. I challenge you to write down 10 people that you know that are not saved. And I ask and commission you to pray for them every single day. How much do you want to see them in heaven? Then the first thing is pray, amen. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in the end, my eyes are fixed on Jesus. In the end, until that day where I can see my Savior face to face and I can live forevermore. Until then, for as God enables me, I want to see Others see Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Then if you do, tell the world. Don't ever be afraid.